Uh, Ron DeSantis, the chief criticism of you, I hear out in the grassroots, there's a perception somehow among my listeners that even though you have a 99% conservative voting record with the American Conservative Union and you co-founded the Freedom Caucus, that you are associated with the Bushes and endorsed by Paul Ryan and you are part of that political group. Is that true? No, it's all false. They've never been able to produce that. People, this is just Trump's people, just repeat it. Trump endorsed Paul Ryan when we were trying to remove him in the Freedom Caucus back in 2016. Trump endorsed McCarthy. Trump endorsed McConnell for re-election in 2020. Uh, I didn't do any of those things. That was Trump, not me. And so here's the thing. Uh, that is delusional stuff. Look at what I've done as governor, okay? We fought the biomedical security state. There weren't very many Republicans willing to do that. We banned gender transition surgeries for minors. Not a lot of Republicans have been willing to do that. We banned sanctuary cities. We put in E-Verify. How many people associated with Paul Ryan would have sent illegal aliens to Martha's Vineyard? Uh, we've pushed back against DEI and ESG ban central bank digital currency. There's not a single elected Republican in the country who can match that record. And so if you look at that, I mean, I don't know how you would explain that away and try to indulge in stuff like that. So those are people that are just not following facts. And look, at the end of the day, if you're for Trump, that's fine. But don't delude yourself into thinking that that's accurate. It's just not. Uh, did Matt Gates make a mistake removing uh, McCarthy. A lot I, think of people divided be, today. I think it remains to be seen. I mean, I think that what's the step forward and are they going to produce better results? Clearly, when they do a continuing resolution locking in Biden's policies, even if it's for 45 days, that's not what we sent them there to do. That was a failure. They're spending too much money. They're not securing the border. And then, of course, you have weaponized government that they're giving money to. So, so that was a failure. The question is, who's going to step into the breach and how are they going to be able to go forward? And I don't know that he's got a plan for that. I guess we'll see. I'm hearing different people are going to stand up. But what, which, what, what isn't going to end up working is if it's just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. I mean, is there going to be a fundamental change into how they're viewing this or is it just going to be more of the same? And look, I make the point. Republicans and Democrats got us into this mess. We don't have 33 trillion on one party. As much as we like to blame Democrats and all that, and they have their fair share, but they've added a lot as Republicans, particularly since COVID with the trillions and trillions of dollars. And that is what has driven people's prices up more than anything, the COVID response and the six trillion that they pumped out in a one year period. How are you gonna walk into that swamp though and rein that in? What are you gonna do that's different to stop all this spending? A couple things. I mean, one is I'm not trying to be liked by the swamp. I don't care what the media says about me. I wear a tax as a badge of honor. I'm gonna do what's right. I'll take the arrows because I know I'm standing up for the people. Two, I understand the Constitution. I understand the levels, levers of power, and I understand how to use political leverage to be able to get what we need done. I did it to great extent in Florida. It is more difficult in Washington. Of course it is. But we'll be ready on day one. We'll have all our executive orders ready. We'll have all the legislation we're looking with Congress, working with the congressmen ready. We'll have thousands of political appointees ready to go. And it's just day one, you're spitting nails, upending the bureaucracy, fighting for the, the good budget, fighting for the, the border and, and declaring that an emergency. It's going to be one thing after another, day after day after day, we're going to get the job done. I got one more quick question. It's a personal one for me. You walked into a purple legislature, a mentally purple legislature, and you turned them into a printing press. I mean, they shoot your bills out every six weeks. You want to, I've never seen anything like it. It's, there's nothing like it in the country. How did you whip them into shape. What did you do? It's bottom up. I mean, you know, we inspired the people of Florida. We shifted the electorate because of good leadership from being a divided state to being now a red state. We may be redder than South Carolina now because of what we've done. Um, and so what it is, is these guys are talking to their representatives and their senators and the voters are telling them, you better be with the governor on this. Oh, did you, governor's doing this? Are you, are you supporting them? And so it really is, it's been a bottom up movement and we work well with the legislature and I've got a lot of friends there, but it isn't like I'm like twisting their arms. I'm going over the head like Reagan did, we're delivering a compelling message and we're getting the support from the people. And I think that's what we'll do in DC. It's not going to be backroom deals. It's going to be bottom up. People's voices are heard. 
And this is finally the time, after all these years, it should be a government that belongs to we, the people, not to the bureaucrats. Uh, anything you want to give uh, our listeners, WORD, you're talking to half of two states. What's your 30-second elevator pitch? Why you, Ron DeSantis? I'll be the first uh, uh, veteran of a war elected since 1988. I could have made a lot of money. I decided to serve the country. That should tell people that I put service above self. I'm a father of three kids. I understand parents' rights. I understand how important it is that education and not indoctrination rules the day in, in the United States, not just in the state of Florida. Uh, and I'm somebody that has a proven record. I'm the only one running that everything I promised I would do I delivered. In fact, I over-delivered on my promises. The time for excuses is over. It doesn't matter what you tweet. It doesn't matter the theatrics. The only thing that matters is are you actually delivering results? We need the results starting in January of 2025. I can serve two consecutive terms like President Reagan did, uh, and we'll be able to reverse the country's decline after those two terms. Thank you very much. Thank you.